This presentation is delivered by the Stanford Center for Professional Development. Okay, w welcome. Welcome to the um, 17th annual Christmas tree lecture. I, I, as many of you know, uh, every year for quite a few number of years, uh, I, I, I take this time to tell you sort of the coolest thing I learned about trees during the year. Uh, the trees are the greatest, uh, probably the greatest uh, thing unique to, that, that computer science has added to mathematics in some ways. Uh, uh, and uh, and so many things are, are going on that uh, I seem to never run out of, of brand new things uh, that I'm learning about trees. And uh, this year certainly was no exception. Um, it's, it's really nice to see so many old friends here tonight. And I must say I'm, I'm in a kind of a mellow mood now because this afternoon was the party that Stanford throws for its emeritus faculty. Um, and I hope I didn't drink too much wine. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> and uh, also I have to say I'm, uh, I, uh, I'm celebrating a, 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 a good year. My, my wife and I uh, uh, had our 50th wedding anniversary in, in, in June. And, you know, and, uh, and among other things, uh, uh, you know, and another sort of a lifelong dream came through also just a few weeks ago when, when I got this book in the, uh, uh, let's see if, if Jason can, can put that on camera, this, this book uh, uh, came out and uh, I guess the bookstore actually has it outside now. Uh, this is, I, I'm going to show you just a, a quickly uh, what this is because uh, um, uh, as I say, it's something I sort of always dreamed uh, would, 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 would be nice. It, it, it's an index to, to everything I, I, I wrote, basically. Uh, <laughs> um, you, know, so, you know, so you want to know uh, how many times I referred to Alan Perlis right here, you know, okay. And, and a lot of, lot of you in the audience are also mentioned, okay. But, uh, you know, there's all the titles in, in various languages. Uh, of, of things I did, and uh, for each paper I wrote a little annotation what it's about, um, and uh, you know all the books and the people who translated them and the different editions and so on. Uh, and uh, it, at the beginning, all the problems that I submitted to various journals uh, with, uh, are, are, are given in, uh, uh, over the years, and then the, then the answers are, uh, are only given to the ones that hadn't been published yet. Uh, otherwise, I have a reference to the thing, and uh, you know a few other, and, and then it, and then there's a 150 pages or so of interviews that that were taped 15 years ago, uh, and uh, sort of uh, just talking about stuff. Uh, so, um, oh, this is a picture of me when I was a fraternity uh, who went through Hell Week as an undergraduate. I'm, I was talking a little bit about my undergraduate. Anyway, that's what this book is, and. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's distributed in Chicago, and the distributor doesn't have it on his, in his catalog till February, so Amazon isn't selling it till February. But at Stanford Bookstore, you can get it now. So that's, that's this book. Makes me happy. So, you know, life is full of ups and downs, and, and I, it's nice to celebrate ups once in a while. So that's what I'm, I'm that's sort of the way I'm feeling now. Um, so tonight, uh, uh, the subject is what? Oh, yeah, Bayesian trees and BDDs. And uh, and so I want to and I think it's uh, it, it, uh, it's going to be uh, as they say cool things about trees but I and I hope uh, you enjoy it too. Um, first, I want to talk about a, a very general idea which goes uh, across many different fields, and uh, uh, I, I'm going to call it factor models. Um, and uh, and. Uh, uh, it, as I say, it arises many different disciplines, and I'll just give you one simple example, and I'll and I'll say a sub i j times b sub j k l times c sub l some k m, let's say where where i j k l and m uh, are uh, indices that belong to various domains. I mean, you might say that they, they're either they might be binary or they might be. Uh, uh, you know, they might range from zero to a hundred, or something like that, or, or you know, they might be uh, from any any domain you like. 
uh, the A's and B's and C's are, are you know, are, are, uh, are, are numbers. Uh, usually they're real positive numbers, but they could be complex numbers, whatever. Uh, but, but, but I'm going to multiply them together, so I, so I want them to be numbered. Uh, and so uh, now uh, you can think of this as somehow representing a, a, a system of five particles that can be various states, um, uh, and, and I, J, K, L, and M, uh, uh, this five tuple tells the, the various states that, uh, that these particles can be in. Um, and um, and uh, I, I call this uh, product the weight uh, I, J, K, L, M, and M. So, so this is the weight associated with that state. It, it, you can think of it as the importance or, or, or uh, how often the state is. But anyway, abstractly, it's just the product of these numbers, but we call it the weight. Uh, now, so for example, if, if these I, J, K, L, and M are binary, then there's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. There's 32 different states possible. Uh, if, they're all, if these are, say, digits 0 to 9, then there's uh, 10 to the 5th, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, 100,000 states, uh, uh, but but anyway, and maybe I could go in one domain and J could be in another domain, and you know each each one could be different. Uh, but anyway, that's the idea. Now uh, a, a sub i J is is basically a matrix of numbers. So if these are our digits, then it's a 10 by 10 matrix. Uh, C is also a matrix, uh, but but B is a tensor, uh, might be 10 by 10 by 10, for example. Uh, so it's, it's a bunch of numbers that that uh, you multiply together and you get the weight of, of a state. Now, in um, uh, if we're thinking of these as probabilities, then the the probability of being in in this state uh, would be um, uh, W oak of I J K L M uh, divided by uh, W star 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 star, um, which is um, Defined to be the the total weight, um, and uh, 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 that's the sum over all i j k l and m of w i j k l m. Okay, so this is this is uh, uh, the, if the weights are 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 non-negative, then we then we can uh, uh, that, then we can use this as probability. But in, in a lot of the examples, they don't have to be. But but uh, but the majority of all examples, they are. So now uh, this is this very general thing called a factor model, and it arises in many different cases. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of examples. First of all, um, uh, let me I guess I'll start with a new page. Uh, so uh, statistical physics is 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 one of the great big examples. Uh, so statistical physics, um, uh, these are called Gibbs states. And uh, instead of A sub I, J, uh, the physicists often write that as uh, E to the minus <laughs> beta times alpha I, J, let's say, um, where beta is, is uh, the reciprocal of the temperature and alpha I, J is the energy associated with uh, 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 with uh, 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 the uh, interaction between particles I and J, in states I and J. Um, and uh, it, in statistical physics, uh, uh, they, they're thinking of lots and lots of particles uh, that can be in various kinds of states of magnetism or spin or whatever. And, uh, uh, but you get, you get weight associated with, with their energy and the temperature in this, in this physical way. Um, and in that in physics, they, this uh, this total weight function here is called the partition function of their of their system. Okay, so that's one one uh, important set of models. Uh, another one, database theory. Um, uh, database theory uh, really factor models come up there too, but in disguise slightly. Uh, in this case, the, uh, the these things a a i j b are, are either zero or one, um, and um, and in this thing they will they, they will say that for example a i j is zero or one uh, equals one if um, if i j is it, 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 it is a member of a relation 
This is a relational database, a relation IJ. So, 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 so we have, this would be a database with three relations in it, IJ, JKL, and KM. And then um, uh, the, the, uh, the set of all IJ, KL, M um, uh, uh, with um, uh, A, I, J, B, J, K, L, C, K, M equal one. Uh, this is called the natural join of the three relations. Uh, and so, so you join together different relations, uh, and, and it corresponds to a product really in this, this way. Um, and uh, so uh, sort of a weak connection there, but it's connection between statistical physics and database theory that sort of approaches this when a temperature gets infin infinite. Now, um, uh, however, in, in statistical physics, you're usually thinking of small number of states, while I and J have a big range in, in big databases. And, and okay, smaller number of particles. Um, okay, now, in, now a third example, constraint satisfaction problem is becoming so important, it's now called CSP. <clears throat> I mean, database theory is DB, I guess, okay, but uh, constraint satisfaction problems. And um, constraint satisfaction problems are also uh, often of this form where uh, where the where we have uh, 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 zero one uh, factors, and then uh, uh, we're trying to, to to satisfy all of the all, all of the constraints. So so a i j represents a certain constraint. Here here it's it, it, it constraint satisfaction problem is usually rare t to have. Uh, to have a solution to all to all of these cases. Well, in the database theory, you usually have lots and lots of tuples, uh, and then you have to do do other things with them. But now, in, in, uh, you can also uh, uh, it didn't have to be zero zero or one valued here if you wanted to have things that have, uh, for example, if the, if the weights were one and two or one and some large number. Uh, then we would, then we might try to maximize. We would try, try to find a state that's maximal. Uh, uh, okay, for, for example, uh, uh, take uh, uh, the satisfiability problem. The satisfiability problem is is the most famous constraint satisfaction problem, where we, where these are, where these represent clauses, uh, uh, where this would say maybe I or J is true, and, and this would say J or K or L. And, and then uh, in the satisfiability problem, you, 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 try to, you have lots of clauses, and you try to find ver values of the Boolean variables so that all the clauses are true. And, uh, and uh, that's a special case of the constraint satisfaction problem. And there's lots and lots of, of uh, real-world problems that come this. And the problem of max sat could be represented as, as trying to find uh, uh, configurations that ha that are somehow have the maximum weight. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, now the fourth one uh, example is Bayesian networks, and um, uh, again factor models very important. And uh, let me show you one sort of a diagram here. I have I with an arrow coming down here to J. And I'll put a label A at, on top of that, and then an arrow from J to L, and also an arrow from K to L. And I'll put a B there. And then I have an arrow here to M with a C on top of it. And um, in, in this case, we might say that AIJ uh, is the probability of J given I, and B uh, J K L is the probability of L given J and K. And C, similarly, CKM is the probability of M given K. <clears throat> and then um, often uh, they add another one. That, uh, uh, they put a D here, and they say DI is the prior probability of I, for example, for, of being in state I. And so then, uh, oh, we might as well have a prior here on, on, on K as well. Uh, and so then um, uh, you, you could figure then... Uh, uh, the total weight would, would, would turn out to be one, and, and uh, we get the probability, uh, you know, that I is in a certain state, and then given the state of I, there's a certain uh, uh, chance that that J, uh, that that this variable is in state J, and so on. Uh, okay, so uh, this um, 
the probability in that case, the weight uh, is, 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 a, is a probability. Now, uh, in, in, in all of these examples, we could, we could normalize the things so that the total weight is one. You, you, because you could just scale any of these, you know, you could just multiply any of these uh, guys by a, by a, a, a positive constant, a, a, a non-zero constant, make the weight one. Well, let's say the case of, of non-negative variables. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, so a lot of t people, you know, spend a lot of time dividing these things out. But when you're working with algorithms, it's often, you, since the scaling is arbitrary, uh, it, uh, I, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to do the mathematics where I keep dividing and, and, and normalizing all the time. Uh, rather, just consider it uh, a simple case where I'm summing all the time, and this, the probability is proportional to, to this weight, but not uh, equal to, to, to the weight. And so I'm thinking of, of, it, 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 of these not of these uh, these matrices and these and you know uh, this d sub i would be a vector and e sub k would be a vector. These matrices and vectors and, and tensors. I'm thinking of these in a projective sense, where you, any positive multiple of the of the matrix it gives you essentially the same matrix, or or, or tensor or or vector or whatever. Okay. Any questions so far? So that's general idea of factor model, and. Uh, uh, so uh, a lot of people have been studying these, and and uh, and uh, uh, they all have their own notations for it, and they all have they all have their own problems that they that they've focused on, um, and uh, I'm not sure if they're talking to each other as much as they as as they should be, but uh, I have seen papers by physicists that are talking about Bayesian uh, uh, networks, so I so it's getting so so there there's some some communication going on uh, now uh, as I. As I pointed out when I when I introduced this book, I've written a whole bunch of books, but every once in a while I have to stop and read something too. And so this summer, I I I I, I you know I had to go into input mode, and I and and I and I began to read some things that I should have read ages ago. And I and I began to learn more about Bayesian networks in particular, and uh, and I and I learned about a really cool um, uh, idea that. Uh, uh, that, that Judea Pearl uh, introduced um, in the 80s. Um, and, um, uh, well, let me, let me say a few, few words. For, anyway, the, 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 the physicists uh, actually have, uh, so, so it rises a lot in AI, uh, artificial intelligence, but uh, uh, research, but uh, the physicists, uh, uh, I think, have a better, in, in some ways, better notation for, for these uh, 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 for a lot of the applications, although the 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 people who uh, who work in AI and draw these directed graphs, uh, there's a, a, a good a good point for that too. But uh, for a lot of the manipulations that we're actually doing in calculation, I like the physicist's uh, uh, simple model first, which is really connects it with the mathematical idea of a hypergraph. And so let me let me re let me draw the physicist's diagram for that small factor model. Uh, 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 it's, uh, it, it, it's, it consists of square boxes and circles, and I, I put the, uh, uh, the, the state variables in circles, and I put the, uh, uh, the, the names of the matrices or vectors or functions or whatever they are in square boxes, and it's always alternating. Uh, you always have a circle to a square box and a square box to a circle. You never have two circles adjacent, never have two square boxes adjacent. So this is a bipartite graph. It has two parts. It has the, the state parts and it has the, uh, uh, the function parts. And then you have a line joining each function to the, dip, to the, to the states that, that occur, like a, a sub i j means that a gets joined to i and j and, 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 and so on. And, and this, uh, uh, this way of looking at it simplifies a lot of the issues. Um, and in, in, in a case like this, you notice there's no cycle, there's no loops in the diagram, and that's where, where we get to the connection with trees. Uh, the, the, idea, the, the uh, definition of a, of a free tree is that there, uh, it, 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 uh, in graph theory is that there's no cycle. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, if, if you don't have a free tree, well, you, you might be able to... Um, uh, uh, to break it up so that you, into into pieces that are, but uh, but anyway, let uh, um, let let's imagine that we're working with free trees like this one. And for this, there's a beautiful way to calculate 
uh, uh, like like this this total waste. And also, by the way, I also sh should mention other thing that people often want to calculate, and that's what they call marginals. Um, and that would be a sum like W star star K star star, uh, where I, where I, I I put a few stars, but not all all the stars, and that would be the sum over I J. L and M, but not K, of of the weights. All right. So, so um, uh, in, you know, one of the things you want to find out uh, in a lot of applications is what's the probability that that one part of it has a particular state summed over all of the uh, all of the, the uh, variables in the others, uh, uh, taking the proper weight into account. Okay. So, so uh, uh, when you have a tree hypergraph like this. Uh, then uh, uh, Pearl found a beautiful way to calculate all of the all of the marginals for all of the you know all, there, this one has five marginals for you could fix i you could fix j or um, so on all, all of the marginals efficiently if you have n, uh, n n state variables you, you, you know you, you you can get all of the n mar marginals uh, by passing messages between uh, the nodes of, of this graph uh, for example you know there, there there might be some some messages that go from b to k. And, and those messages tell node K about this part of the graph. Uh, and there, there will also be messages from K to B that tell B about this part of the graph. And, and these messages are computed by doing multiplications and additions uh, in a very clever way, uh, choreographed so that there are never any loops. You, can, you, you have to do a, 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 few left, a few messages going this way, and then, then, then you have enough to get some messages coming the other way, but it just works out uh, that a, a beautiful, uh, 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 beautiful dance where, where, where every, everybody finally at the end, they know all the marginals. Um, and uh, it's linear time. Uh, in, in a, well, you, you have to do a small, you have to, you have to work, uh, 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 it depends on the size of the matrix or the tensor or something at each, at each, uh, at each vector node, but, but Basically, it's about as fast as you could imagine uh, uh, to calculate all these marginals by a very clever way of of, uh, of, of combining the calculation, and um, um, and it's called belief propagation. Uh, this algorithm, um, and uh, uh, and it um, uh, and at, at and when I first saw it in July, I thought, oh yeah, I should definitely talk about it at Christmas time uh, because, it, because it's really nice the way, um, the way uh, these things come together. And, and, uh, and the books that I looked at had some really complicated explanations that I thought could be simplified, well, I hope. Anyway, um, but a week later, I thought of another idea. So I'm talking about, the, I'm not going to talk about belief propagation today. I just use it as an introduction to the, the general area. Uh, I want to show you, uh, I, uh, that I ran across something that's even, because what I ran across is, has even more to do with trees than, than belief propagation does. Uh, so this is really, uh, 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 so, so, so now I'm finally getting to, to the title where I'm talking about Bayesian trees. And, uh, and so here, uh, uh, let's consider a Bayesian network that has the form of a binary tree. Uh, so let's start new, turn, turn a new page in here. We have a Bayesian uh, binary tree. Um, and uh, so I have a note. So I'm going to um, uh, uh, use a new model now. I'm going to call this state variable Q and put an A here. And then I'm going to, that has a branch down to R and to S. Uh, so this is a, it's a binary tree. It means that there are two children or at most of every um, of every node, I'll call this B and C. Then S has a branch down here to T, um, and T has a branch down here to U, uh, and another one to V. I'll call this D, E, and F. And then um, uh, you know it's going to going to be done in a minute. But as you know, I'm running out of letters, so there's W, and there's X, uh, Y, and Z. And that's it. Okay, so H I J. Okay, so so here, uh, so here in this case the weight functions are a, so so, so the weight uh, of a state Q R S T to Z is a Q times b Q R, C Q S D S T E T U, E F T V, 
G, S, W, H, W, X, I, X, Y, and J, Y, Z. And this could be thought of as the probability of prior probability of Q times the probability of R given Q, probability S given Q, and so on and so on until we get probability of Z given X. And this is, this is your weight of state Q, R, S, all the way through Z. Okay, so it's a factor model based on a binary tree. Now, um, let's, so, uh, let's imagine that the states now are binary. So each, each Q, R, S, T, so on through Z, there's 10 of them. Uh, each, each can be either 0 or 1. So I have uh, 2 to the 10th uh, states. 1,024 states uh, of the system. And uh, uh, a, a is equal to A0, A1. This is a vector. Uh, the others are matrices. So B it is uh, B, C through, through J are, 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 are two by two matrices of complex numbers, let's say. Um, and uh, now, the thing is, instead of just calculating marginals, I want to consider computing a much more general thing, uh, which is the sum of, the, of all the weights of Q, R, S, and so on up to Z, uh, subject to the condition that F of Q, R, and so on through Z uh, is one, where F is any Boolean function whatsoever. So, so these are Boolean variables, zero or one. And I and you know uh, uh, the, so I can have all kinds of Boolean functions that describe a condition on these ten variables that's either true or false, and so I'm going to sum not uh, you know not not just to get marginals you know the the, the function for a uh, uh, the function for a marginal like uh, like uh, s uh, you know w of star star s uh, and all stars uh, uh, that would correspond to f equals s, yeah, s equals 1. Uh, uh, and then s equals 0 would be the opposite case once I know the whole, the whole thing. Uh, but here I, here I, uh, uh, I, I wonder, uh, what if, if we wanted to calculate uh, uh, in, any fact, in, in, in a binary factor model of this kind, I uh, wanted to calculate the um, um, uh, much more general kinds of, of, of sums of the weights. Um, now, of course, some Boolean functions are much easier than others. Uh, uh, the, the, the simple marginals uh, that are, are, are normally computed are about as simple as you can get. Uh, very simple Boolean functions, no ands and ors or anything. It's just the projection function. Uh, now, my, fun my method um, isn't going to work efficiently on every, fun on every Boolean function, but it's going to work. Actually, it does work. Uh, very nicely on a great many other functions that are quite different from marginals. And so I'm going to illustrate it in, in, in a special case. And I, the case that I want to show you in, in detail is where this function um, is equal to uh, the function that says the sum of the variables is equal to m. It's exactly m, m of the uh, uh, m1s and and, and in this case, 10 minus m zero. Okay, so exactly m nodes in state one. Um, so, uh, you know, for example, uh, if m equals five, uh, uh, there are exactly um, 10 choose five, uh, 252 uh, of the um, 1024 states have five ones and five zeros. In fact, uh, uh, if I had um, if I had n nodes um, and I and I went to half of the, half of the number of states, you know, uh, n nodes, I would have n uh, choose n over two. Let's say n is even. Uh, and this is uh, if you came to last year's Christmas tree lecture, you'll know that that was equal to two to the n over square root of pi n over two, but that was last year. I, uh, anyway, I'm, I keep talking about, I know about something that's related to trees, but this was different. Now, the, the, so uh, one way to, 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 to evaluate this, obviously, then would be just to sum over, uh, to, you know, to, to uh, uh, 
add up 252 terms or, and, and uh, multiply out for each one and you can save a little time if some of the terms are similar. Uh, however, uh, you know, n gets large, uh, this, is, this is not a good idea. Because two to the n grows very fast. So, I'm gonna, so the method I'm going to show you uh, uh, for this problem it, uh, takes uh, uh, order two, n to the 2.6 number of operations, uh, uh, as a, you know, no matter how large n is. And so uh, I, you could do it easily for uh, if n was, uh, uh, you know, 10,000 or, 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 or something like that very quickly, 10,000, 100,000. Okay. Um, uh, so, so that's the setup. I got a, 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 a binary tree, and I've got a, a Boolean function. This I'm going to I'm going to ex, ex, uh, show the, the example of this particular symmetric Boolean function. Uh, but uh, it works. My method will work for unsymmetric ones and, and lots of other cases, uh, uh, as I'll show you after you understand the the, the simple case. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so now, I, in order to give you an algorithm, uh, I've got to have I got to I, I, I use some more flexible notation because this this alphabetic note I, you know you run out of letters pretty quickly. The, I, I I I I like to do it in lectures because actually Euler did that in his papers. He would always you know instead of using indices one two three he would use a for the first coefficient and b for the second and 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 so on. And he got a lot of mileage out of that, uh, but then. Uh, uh, after a while, you, when, you, you, when you start to talk to a computer, you, you need to have a, a systematic thing. So I'm going to redraw that tree. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm given a binary tree with n nodes. Um, and, I, and I number the nodes in, um, um, in, in uh, pre-order, which is the order of succession to the throne. So here, I, so, so here's the example of the tree that I had a minute ago, um, um, and had ten nodes, and uh, and and so this is the uh, the king, uh, or, or the queen, and then this is the uh, firstborn, and then the, uh, and then it, 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 you know next one if these two are dead that becomes king is this or queen is this one and three and then four uh, and then the, their 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 uh, left children and so on. Um, and uh, so this is pre-order of the node. Um, and, I, uh, and then I'm also given a, a factored weight function, um, W of x1 through xn, which is the product overall k um, of um, a weight um, uh, based on uh, state of, of of k and its parent uh, parent node. So that would mean like uh, uh, if k is seven, that would mean it's a fu it's a function of x seven and x three. The parent of three of seven is three. Um, and so uh, in this particular example, then <laughs> this should be a capital W. Capital W of x one through x ten in in our tree here uh, would be um, uh, w1 of x1, um, x1 has no parent. Then there's w2 of x1, x2, uh, w3 of x1, x3, and uh, so on, ending up with w10 of x8, x10. That's the, that's the uh, in, in general, uh, for any binary tree, we can put it in pre-order and we can give it a weight function like this. Now I'm also I'm going to assume without any loss of generality that the uh, left sub, the size of the left subtree um, is less than or equal to the size of the right subtree at every node of the tree. If not, I could swap them around and and, re, and, and renumber them in in, in pre-order of swapping. This is going to make the algorithm work work better. Um, and I've done this already in, the, in our example, so I don't have to redraw the thing. Okay, now, um, the idea is I want to calculate this, this function of summing the w's over all x1 through x10 that satisfy the function that, uh, uh, here I want x1 plus 
uh, uh, the sum of the variables to equal m, some, some given um, n number of, of, of one bits among the, um, among the ten variables in this particular case. Okay, now um, we can do this by setting up a nice little bottom-up recursion. Uh, well, let, I, let, I don't want to get ahead of myself, though. Let, let me first uh, uh, describe uh, uh, some, some um, other uh, uh, things. First of all, are, are, are you with me so far? Somebody ask a question <laughs> to see. You don't even know how to ask a question? Is this too? Is this too? Is it is all over everybody's head? Huh? Well, um, yeah, you got it. If you wouldn't mind, uh, could you give us some examples with this particular tree and how it, uh, you know, how? Okay. Well, I mean, for example, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I could say this is in state zero. This is in state one. I got zeros here. Okay, right? Uh, one, one. Oh. Uh, Zero, zero. What, these are all each um, one, zero, zero. Okay, I have it. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so now this uh, uh, I would have to I, I would have to take a zero. Uh, uh, well, w w one of zero times w two of um, zero comma one uh, w three of um, Zero comma zero. In other words, this is zero. The, the w three of, of of this guy, w four of uh, this is node four, and and its parent is uh, it is one. Um, and 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 I end up with w ten of one zero. Are, are you with me on that? So, so so in other words, I for any any of the thousand twenty four ways I can put zeros and ones in here, I get a weight. Uh, now. Uh, and these are these are are are, are, are numbers. They're given by like w three uh, zero 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 one one zero one one. These are these are four different numbers. It might be three eight minus two whatever. Okay, so multiply all those together. And I'm going to try to add up all of these products with the problem. But the, uh, for, for the cases that say all of, that there are exactly five ones in here, this is this this one would this particular case doesn't work out. So, so that, that's the problem that I'm trying to trying to get at in general, um, and it's it's like the kind of problem physicists solve about systems of states. But instead of saying I want to I, I want to know you know what, what's the probability that this particular guy is is magnetized or not, uh, instead I want to say what's the probability that this whole system happens to have uh, n magnetized states. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Now, um, uh, however, the, they're usually they usually have to work on more complicated networks than binary trees. Uh, too bad. But, but once we got a binary tree, I, I'm all set to calculate these things. Out. Okay. Now, but it, it illustrates a lot of ideas that we use when we study binary, when we do deal with binary trees in general, and that's what I want to uh, uh, to show you next. Uh, so uh, uh, I got this this overall weight function, uh, uh, but I'm going di to divide it into in, in, into parts. Uh, so I'm going to say w sub i. Uh, which only depends on the last variables, xi through xn. Uh, and this is going to be the product of all the uh, wk's um, uh, functions uh, of, of, of xj, xk. These are, this is the parent of, of uh, uh, j is the parent of node k. Uh, 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 w that don't involve any of the variables uh, before xi. So this means that uh, uh, j has to be greater than or equal to i, um, and uh, it's it's easy to uh, uh, to see uh, in this example what I'm what I mean by this. So so w one is just w; it's the, it's the whole function. W two is a function of x two through x ten. It's the you know it's, uh, we throw away x one, and so we. And so I, I leave off the first two terms. Uh, 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 we had the we had the terms here. That, uh, where, I, I'm sorry. Where did I have it written down? Um, here, the w, x1 appeared in this term, appeared in this term, and this term. But 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 this one starts out at w4. Um, keep our tree in mind here. Um, you can see the tree up there. Yeah. 
so um, uh, W4 of um, X3 uh, and X4 uh, times W5 and et cetera, et cetera, X4, X4 X5, and, 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 and all, all of the other ones. That's W2. Uh, w3 is the same as w2 uh, but that, but w4 is going to is going to throw out anything that had a w3 in it uh, uh, and that'll include this 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 guy here which also w had a had a connection between three and seven uh, anyway I've got this w sub i idea and um, and I'm, I'm going to uh, build up to get the whole function by working on these wi's so working just on on the tail end and and, and getting up to the up to the root finally uh, now i'm also going going to have something um, uh, that i that is uh, is uh, technical but easy to understand once i once i write it down i hope this is what I, s sub j is is the pending children um, uh, when i'm when i'm at node j and uh, and uh, I'll write down the definition. Uh, you know, if you don't understand this now, you can always watch this on the internet. You, you watch this. You can watch this video over ten times. I'm sure you'll get it. It's really easy. Uh, so it, this is all the um, all the x k's where k is, um, is 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 a right child of some node i. Uh, where i is is between j and k. Now this is this is so technical definition. It's only for the people who are watching on the uh, on, on the video. Again, now I'll show you what it what it means intuitively uh, as we as as we go through the tree. Um, but uh, uh, it, it, uh, it, if we if we look at this tree, for example, and say j equals four, uh, then I, I'm I'm saying um, imagine. Uh, uh, all the nodes that are bigger than four uh, that ha have sort of been spawned by somebody, their, their parent is less than four. And so that's seven. Seven, se seven is bigger than four, uh, but its parent is three, which is less than four. And, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll draw the... I'll, I'll draw the S's and, and, and then you, and I think you'll see the idea. So S1 is always it's always empty. You can't get. There's nothing less than one. S two in this case is x three um, because uh, three is bigger than two, and and the parent of three is less than two. Uh, S three is again empty. Uh, S four is s x seven as as I told you a minute ago. S five. Can anybody guess what s five is going to be? It's got to be bigger than five. But it has its parent has to be less than five. Six, six, and, six. six and seven, good. X six, x seven. Okay, now uh, those of you who have played around with binary trees are going to realize this is sort of a stack. That I'm, that that when I when when I go down when I go down the tree from one to two, I I put three on the stack. Uh, okay, and you know, and then I then I then I come over here to three and I take. Take it off the stack again, and I put, but then I go down to four, and I put seven on the stack, and then I put six on the stack, and, and you know, and, and I, the, the, when I pass five, I can take, I, you know, I take, I, I take it off again. So S six is seven, S seven is empty, again S eight also empty, uh, S nine is X ten, and and S ten always S n is always empty. So the stack always starts empty and ends empty, but it's sort of these things that are pending as we're going down, you know, we're waiting for, uh, uh, we haven't processed them yet. We, could, we you know, we, we got we to gotta handle a little extra work because this is a tree, not just a, a straight line. Okay, now, uh, and, and we were clever by putting the, the, the uh, making all the, the right, Sides, the right subtrees bigger than the left subtrees so that we didn't have too many things pending. I could have had a bad tree where lots of things get pending. I have to put stuff on the stack. It's, it's going to, that would slow things down. So it's nice that the stack doesn't get too big. But the general rule is SJ plus 1. Uh, uh, there are three cases. Uh, and, and one case is where um, uh, J is, uh, is a childless node. Uh, Node with that has had nothing below it, uh, and in that case, I take S J and I and I remove X J plus one from the left. It's always 
the, uh, the, the nature of, of pre-order is that if I ever have a childless node, uh, J, then, then J plus 1, XJ plus 1, has to be at, uh, on the stack. That's the way pre-order works. Uh, it's, you know, the, the, the next guy, after, after you get a childless person, the next person to uh, 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 in, in pre-order is the one, uh, you know, is, is the, it, it turned out is going to be, the, you know, somebody has to be king next, and, and that's going to be the guy at the, at the top of the stack in this, in this method. Um, uh, if, um, if J has one child, um, uh, uh, the only uh, it, it, the child always has to be called J plus one uh, in pre-order. If you have only one child, that's the way pre-order goes. You always after you number the node, you, you number its uh, its left child um, or, or 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 its right child if there's no left child. Uh, and sec and similarly or or finally, um, if if uh, J has two kids. Uh, so two children, uh, J plus one is one of them, and the other one is, is, is K. In that case, uh, I put XK to the left of SJ. So, so that's the way we build a stack as we're going down. Uh, whenever we get to a node that has two, two children, uh, uh, it, it'll be J plus one and K. Uh, I throw K, XK onto the stack. Um, uh, and uh, if if if, the, you know, if if there was just one child, then I just leave the stack the same. If if it had no children, uh, I happen to know that uh, that the stack at the left uh, had, had had this guy J plus one, and I can I can I can run. It. So so this is a stack. It's first in, first out. Uh, uh, first in, first out uh, 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 behavior of these uh, of these X's as we as we. Um, Run down a tree. Okay, now, uh, what's the point of all this? Well, uh, our goal uh, is, is to calculate uh, uh, the summation of all W um, of x1 through xn uh, uh, such that x1 plus the sum of all the bits is equal to m. Um, and and we can we can do this bottom up by computing it by, by computing uh, the following functions. I'm going to say t sub j. Now this is this is something that you want to rewind and and and, and, and uh, when you're watching the tape you want to rewind this once, but then you'll get it. T sub j of x s j and capital S j. Uh, so t j is it, it, it is a function uh, depending on on s. And on xj and on however many uh, variables there are in sj, there might be none, there might be several. Um, and uh, this is defined to be the, the summation of the uh, wj of xj through xn uh, such that xj, uh, the sum of, of, of all these binary variables, equals s. Um, you know, um, I have to do a more general problem in order to solve the special problem. This is the special problem that I'm trying to get. But in order to do this, I'm going to have to do sub-problems that are of the same form. Uh, and I'm working, working bottom up uh, by this recursive induct or inductive process. And this is the sum, sum over all, all xk that are not in sj. Um, and k is bigger than j. So, um, can't be J either. So, so all of the things that are not in XJ, I'm going to sum over. The other variables are fixed. They're, they're in, you know, XJ is in here, and, and any variables that are in, in the capital S sub J in that, on the stack, uh, those fi variables are also fixed. But I'm going to sum over all the other, put asterisks, you know, and sum over all the other ways to that. That's some function or other. And, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, at the top of the tree, uh, well, let, let, let me give you an example, because I, I, uh, that's what you were going to ask, right? Uh, so let, let's suppose, for example, j equals 6, uh, and s equals 2, and x6 equals 0, and x7 equals 1. And let's remember that s6 uh, uh, was x7. Uh, so now... 
That's, so in other words, here, T6 of 2, comma, 0, that's X6, XJ. Capital S sub J is, is X7, so this is 1. So, so I have a, here a function of, of three, three variables, and this is going to uh, 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 be the summation uh, over all X's that aren't in this thing. So this is the sum over X8, X9, and X10 of W6 of 0, 1, x8, x9, x10. Um, uh, that's uh, xj through xn, because uh, uh, I happen to know that x6 is 0 and x7 is 1, uh, subject to the condition that x8 plus x9 plus x10 is equal to what? Well, um, uh, s is 2. So I want the sum of all five variables to be 2. So therefore, x8, 9, 10 had better be equal to 1. All right, because I, because I, you know, I already got 1, 1 in here. And so, okay, so, that, so, 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 so this, is a, this is one of the functions that, we, that we'll want to compute uh, uh, by, our, by our method. And it's supposed to, it's supposed to be, be of this form. So that's an example. And, and, uh, and the point is, uh, that uh, it, 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 there's a simple recursion that solves this. At, at, at the very bottom, uh, we have T S of S X N, uh, capital S sub N is always empty, uh, so it's just T S N at the, at the bottom, and this is, this is a simple, it's a sum over no variables, and so it turns out to be, uh, 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 to be X N equals S. It's either zero or one, um, and it's, um, you have to understand what the uh, what the summation means, but it's either zero or one. It's, it, it says that uh, uh, it's it, it's one if x n equals. I mean, s is either zero or one, so, so, so it depends on the value of x n. But that's the way we get going, and then uh, uh, going going up the tree, t sub j of s x j s j uh, has three cases again corresponding to the childless state or not. Um, uh, J uh, one one ki one child and J has uh, two has two ch children J plus one and K um, and uh, uh, so in each case we can calculate this I'll write it down for, uh, just so that you get the idea so it'll be S minus X J um, X J plus one S J plus one in this case um, and that makes sense because S J plus one it uh, was obtained by throwing out x, this variable um, out of, it was, it, it was in sj, but not in sj plus 1. Um, in this case, it's t of, oh, sorry, it's the summation on xj plus 1, sum, summation xj plus 1 of wj plus 1 xj. Uh, Try a new formula here. Summation xj over xj plus one of wj plus one. This weight function of uh, xj and xj plus one. Uh, that's that particular function times this t sub j plus one of x minus s. Uh, sorry, s minus xj. xj plus one. sj plus one. And uh, in, in the third case where there's two kids. Uh, it's it's very similar. I'll write it down quickly. You're summing over x j plus one and x k, and you have two of these guys, um, um, w k of x j and x k, and then there's a t j plus one, and and here it's um, s minus x j, s minus x j. Like I shouldn't have had that glass of wine. Um, x k plus one. Xj plus one and Sj plus one, and uh, this uh, Sj plus one uh, is equal to Xk and Sj. So uh, uh, it uh, Xk does appear in in the right place there and makes some sense. So that's the the, the, the that's the recurrent and, and um, uh, we don't have to do this for all values of S. We only have to do it for values of S that are that are going to I'll contribute to the final sum, so I can, I can restrict it to the case that s is, 
is greater than or equal to the maximum of zero and um, um, m plus one minus j, and it and uh, and the, the biggest s can be and and, uh, and matter to the final answer is m and n plus one minus j. Anyway, this is all part of the algorithm, and no other values of s would contribute to the. Uh, to t t one, which is our final our, our final goal, and each of these steps, no matter which case we're in, each of these steps, uh, the, the worst case is that we do six uh, multiplications and, and three additions. So uh, uh, I I've got this program on the web. If you want to, if, if you're really interested, that you want to you, you want to play with it, uh, it, it, it you look under tree probs on my website, and uh, and and uh, it, uh, it it. It implements this recursion, and and uh, here's what here's what the answer looked like. Uh, I, I'll put here as a as a sequence of, of mathematical formulas. So uh, uh, take take for example, uh, here's one of the. Uh, like, can you zoom in uh, just quick on this top line just to get an idea? Okay, so there's some there's some uh, there's some t's and there's you know multiplications in here. Uh, I I like mathematical because you don't have to write the multiplication signs. So, you know, so for example, uh, uh, we you know S S four was x seven, S five was x six and x seven. Like one of these lines here says T S would stand for T T four of S X four S seven, and and I have to I have to instantiate that for each value of S. So so I have I'll have values here. This T this T uh, this four is 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 the t sub j. That, that's the j. That the, the next one is s, and then the other two parameters are x four and x seven. Uh, and on the right hand side, uh, I have this calculation that involves t fives. Uh, uh, you know, t's at the next level. So it's a recur it's a recurrence that uses a, a, sm a small number of uh, of uh, multiplications and additions, and eventually uh, the total number of lines in this file was 130 some. Uh, instead of 252, which is a, a little bit of a progress. But of course, if uh, n was um, uh, was much larger than 10, we would be saving a, a lots and lots more. Um, well, but still, what's the point? Um, <clears throat> I, I, you know, I, each of these steps is um, is small. However, um, uh, there's lots of ways to instantiate this thing. Um, you know, if 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 S J has uh, R sub J elements in it, uh, uh, we need to compute uh, two to the R J plus one values of um, of T sub J S X J S J for each for each for each uh, S for each value of S that's relevant. Uh, and so, you know, th this can be scary. Two to the, uh, you know, power of two here. Two to the, uh, you know, uh, 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 one, one of these S's had uh, had two elements in it. So this means I have to calculate eight values. Uh, you know, as, as you saw in that output, there were a whole bunch of calculations for for, for T4. Uh, uh, and then I had to try it for different values of S as well. Okay, so um, uh, th how am I going to get this to be efficient? Well, uh, fortunately, there's a theorem, which I let you prove by yourself, but Rj is always at most the, the, the logarithm base two of n plus one, so so it never gets uh, uh, it never gets bigger than log of n, and therefore two to the Rj plus one um, is uh, always big O of n. It's you know at most two n. Um, another theorem, um, may, maybe even better than the first one. Is that the sum of overall j of two to the r j plus one um, is equal to big O of n to the binary log of three, <coughs> which is n to the one point five eight five. So it's polynomial in n, uh, uh, not too not too, too big a case. Now. Uh, this theorem is, um, I'll, I'll say a little more about it, uh, but you can, uh, 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 I'll show you how, how you can prove it yourself. But, uh, suppose Qn is equal to the worst case. Um, so, so let Qn be the worst case. Uh, that can happen. You know, over all binary trees of n nodes, 
which one says the biggest sum of the two to the rj plus one. And, the, and, 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 and we get a, a nice recurrence for this. Q0 is zero. Uh, Qn plus one is equal to two pl plus the max uh, uh, over k that's between zero and n minus k of two qk plus qn minus k. This is an interesting occurrence. The, the reason for it is you have a binary tree and you have k guys on the left and n minus k guys on the right. Um, uh, and you have n, n plus one nodes all together. Uh, then um, uh, what happens is the stack goes up by one for each of these guys. So we have to multiply this, this sum uh, by two for the left subtree. And we have to, and, and we have to, uh, but we, but this subtree stays the same. So, so it's two, two times the, the, the worst case on the left plus the worst case on the right, and then we have to add two for, for the root here. So that's the, uh, that's the idea, and 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 the values of uh, uh, n equals zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Q sub n is equal to zero, two, four, eight, ten, fourteen. It grows as I. Claim of order n to the log of three, and it's even it's even nicer than that. Um, uh, the reason, is, the fact is that q n is equal to two to the new n plus q n minus one. The new n is the number of one bits in n. <coughs> so, for example, q seven is eight more than q six. The q eight is only two more than q seven because because eight has only one bit in it, and seven has three and, and bits in it, and uh, uh, q of, um, of for example two to the a plus two to the b plus two to the c. If you have a number that <coughs> uh, this is a special case of a general theorem, it turns out to equal three to the a plus one plus two times three to the b plus one <coughs> plus four times three to the c plus one. And in general, if, if, if n is composed of <coughs> uh, you know, new n powers of, of 2, then uh, you have a similar formula here, and that goes to show <coughs> that the q's aren't, aren't big. Okay, so that's the idea, and this in the uh, online encyclopedia of in, in, integer sequences, this is sequence now, <coughs> um, A193494, which I submitted to the to this to the thing in July when I when I did this work, <coughs> okay. So uh, it's actually twice the, twice that sequence. Um, all right. Now so so um, uh, I now explain the algorithm to you and prove to you that it's uh, th that that its runtime is uh, it is not too bad. The reason that it finally at, at for every j I have only um, uh, order n possible s's to, vet, to, to, uh, to work on. And so, uh, I, so I take this number and I sum it over all j, but I also can throw in another factor of n, and that, makes, that, that, that uh, is, is a plenty generous way to show that the total work is n to the 2.585. OK, so that's the, that's the algorithm. Now I, now I want to uh, 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 summarize. By by telling you uh, the, what you know, what about the general case? So, so I have a general method, um, which is just almost the same as a special one. Uh, uh, given any Boolean function f, not just this particular function, saying that the sum is equal to m, um, and uh, uh, and for this we use, uh, as I said in my title for the talk, BDDs, binary decision diagrams. And I've given a couple of lectures on binary decision diagrams and, and you know, BDDs and ZDDs in the past. Well, tonight I'm talking about QDD, which is a quasi-binary uh, decision diagram. It's the same as, a, as, as an ordinary one, except that it doesn't allow jumping levels. And so in a quasi-BDD, in, in a quasi, uh, uh, B, BD, um, we evaluate a Boolean function by having branch nodes that always go from a branch on xj to a branch to a branch on xj plus one. I never 
we never skip levels. Um, but but then there's a sequence of, of there, there's a sequence of nodes. Let's see. I have a, a, a I have a I could show you a, a picture of a BDD. A bike. Do, do I have a volume four on any of these guys? Or volume four, fascicle one. Yeah. Here's the Japanese uh, uh, version. So, um, uh, you know, so so. so uh, Here's an, here's an example of a, 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 of a QDD. So you know you you want to know if here we actually have several functions. Uh, uh, but let's take f5. So it branch on x1, and it's either you, zero or one. That, that takes you to these two nodes, and then you, you branch again. Um, this isn't quite a QDD, and the QDD would have to go all the way th uh, uh, to, to get to the uh, to get to the root node uh, uh, by branching on three and four. Uh, and uh, uh, but in, but for, for a symmetric function like the one we did here um, uh, to count the number of bits, uh, uh, the, the QDD is really nice and simple. Uh, and in general, the simpler the the, the QDD, uh, the uh, you know, uh, anyway, th these are very great ways to represent Boolean functions. Um, and the simpler the the QDD, the the faster the the algorithm is. Uh, for the following reason, <clears throat> uh, for, for every node in the QDD, alpha, and then it has de de descendants of beta and gamma, uh, beta might equal gamma uh, in, in, um, in the QDD and not in the BDD. Uh, uh, but anyway, we have a, we have a, a recurrence uh, like my T sub J's, and it's alpha of XJ, capital SJ, is equal to, and then it's... Uh, uh, on the right hand side, I have three cases uh, uh, beta, gamma, x, um, j plus one, x, j plus one. Um, uh, if uh, uh, j is childless, no j is childless. Um, and and uh, uh, in this notation, beta, gamma means um, beta if xj is equal to zero and gamma if xj equals one. So I, so I, I depending on whether xj is zero or one, I, 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 I branch from the alpha function to the beta function or to the gamma function. But it's very simple. And then here it's going to be a summation on xj plus one of a similar thing with, with, with beta and gamma. And here it's going to be a sum on xj plus one xk of, um, of, of, you know, of weight functions. And then there'll be a beta gamma xj plus 1, sj plus 1, always coming out here. So uh, in, in general, then, given any QDD, I get a, I, I get a whole bunch of, of, of recurrence equations, just like my t sub j's in, in the special case that I did. <coughs> and um, uh, the total running time in this algorithm is the summation j equal 1 to n of 2 to the rj of plus 1 times n sub j. Rj is the number of elements in S in, 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 in capital S sub J on this number of elements on the stack at node J. Little n sub J is the number of nodes in the QDD on, on level J. Uh, and this uh, uh, it, you know, is, is going to be small if, uh, if nj is small, because I know that it, it, it's, it, uh, I know that this sum is, is bounded by n to the 1.585. Uh, and similarly, uh, we can evaluate many different uh, uh, weight functions at once, uh, 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 um, simultaneously, uh, because it's called a QDD base. If, if, if you have many functions, that, but they all are, are, are given in the QDD base, uh, then they can share uh, these sub these subfunctions. And, and so we can get a lot of things at the top. So anyway... Um, uh, that's the, that's the algorithm, and I, I describe it in terms of of multiplying numbers and adding numbers. But the same idea would work. Uh, it only depends on the uh, uh, associative and distributive laws of, of addition and multiplication. So, you know, instead of having um, uh, multiplying and then adding, I could I could add and then take min or something like that. Any 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 operation. Uh, if you're careful, you don't even need the commutative law in this particular in particular case. So, so this gives an efficient way to evaluate these these uh, uh, sums over over states of of trees, 
uh, uh, in in uh, in a large uh, um, huge number of of possible um, uh, situations. Uh, it's not as fast as the as the leaf propagation in the special case of uh, of uh, of just computing simple marginals. Uh, uh, I, I I don't know this in this case all the messages go upward, but in the leaf propagation some messages are going either way and. Uh, uh, there, there might be a way that, go, that goes both up and down in the QDD, who knows, but uh, 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 far as, okay. Uh, so now I've described the algorithm, but I still have to ask once again, what's the point? Um, and the, and, and, okay, the first, uh, the, in other words, I got now an algorithm that's quite cute and it's very efficient, but I only th thought of the algorithm um, as something that I could do, not as something I needed. Uh, you know, I, never in my life have I actually been given a binary tree and somebody says, oh, please evaluate the sum over all the states that are, you know, that have a certain weight. I, you know, this is, this, this, so I've got this great algorithm waiting for, wait, waiting for a customer. You know. um, but, uh, uh, you know, still, the fact that factor models are so, are, are so common, uh, you know, who knows there might be, and I figure, here I got a captive audience at Christmas time, I know, I, uh, um, uh, if, if, it, if it turns out ever to be useful, then somebody will know, and, and then, then it'll be great. Otherwise, it's just a nice uh, academic exercise, and we, can, and we learned some techniques and saw that, oh yeah, stacks are, still, are good for, uh, you know, also, you can combine BDD technology with Bayesian technology, completely different groups of people never talk to each other. Uh, but maybe they so. Now, uh, I should also, I got to also mention, though, there, there, there's hope that maybe somebody else who did need this, although I, 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 I'm not sure. I got to show, but uh, I, 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 um, I, I recently bought Daphne Kohler's great book on, um, uh, she was the greatest expert on Bayesian networks, and so I, I, I happened to, I ran into her on Tuesday, and I've got the, her book here. Can, can you show the book on, uh, on the camera? So, so, uh, uh, it came out this year, I think, didn't it? Okay, so, so, uh, uh, and so I, I'm, I ran into her on Tuesday, and I said, oh, I'm going to be talking about BD, uh, Bayesian networks on, you know, on Thursday, and, I, uh, and, and, uh, you know, so she said, it's, yeah, it's too bad that, uh, you know, her, her, her daughter has in a, a holiday program tonight and so on, but, she, but anyway, uh, I, I, I told her that the method I have, I said, hmm, she said, that sounds a little bit like exercise 9.20 in my book, so, so, so um, <laughs> Uh, you know, so so there's hope that it might now. Now I I have to admit that I I, I haven't cut, read enough of this book to understand how to read exercise 9.20. Here's, but you can you can look at it here. It, it's got two stars, and 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 she set it up in kind of a kind of a cute way. You are taking the final exam for a course in computational complexity theory, and your professor has sneaked in some unsolvable problems and so on. So anyway, here's an application possibly <laughs> of, of, of of this technology. But it, but it, it, it might or might not be related. I, 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 uh, she doesn't go into you know, post order in any. Maybe she has a much simpler way to do what I did, or, or maybe the problems aren't totally the same. Uh, I, I'm not sure. But anyway, there is this possible connection that somebody else has, uh, uh, has also had the same uh, 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 thought. But uh, you know, Daphne knows infinitely more about these things than I do. Um, but uh, still, I uh, I think it's instructive. Uh, it, um, even if I learn that that, that uh, my whole method was uh, w w was a flop. Uh, th uh, thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any residual questions before you come up and grab these books here? I, 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 I announced before the lecture that I've got uh, uh, books in, in, in Czech, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, and, uh, and English for, for the for first come, first serve.